Hello, this is Greg Alston Green. Greg is coming to you on 4 August 22. Time on deck is 22, 5,800 hours Central Daylight Time. Almost tomorrow. My friends, I got to tell you, right now we are in uh, the tensest times I've ever seen in my life. Are we at the prelude of World War III? What is going on around Taiwan? What is China up to? Well, in case you haven't been listening, I saw most of you heard this by now. China has actually launched missiles, at least one missile, right over Taiwan, and five of their missiles landed in the exclusive economic zone of Japan. Not only that, uh, they have exercises going on all around Taiwan, live fire exercises. Plus, they're claiming that this is training for a uh, reunification maneuver or something like that. So, uh, and as you may well know, as you may well know, when uh, all the Russian troops were amassed around uh, Ukraine, they were just on a training maneuver. And of course, most of your uh, pundits says, oh, no, they're not going in. But they did. What's cooking, guys? How serious could this get? I've got uh, contact, some saying that there could be an invasion as early as October. And if they're going to do that, they would definitely want to start softening things up now. But there's some other analysts claiming that this will occur, that there will absolutely be an invasion, according to their intel, supposedly, between the uh, Communist Party Congress that occurs this November and the U.S. presidential election in November of 2024. So which is it? Do we have much time? Do we have no time? Is it, like I said, is this a prelude to World War III? What is cooking? We're going to get all into that, my friends. But listen, guys, if you're not prepping, holy smoke, what are you doing? I mean, gosh, just go buy some extra beans, some extra rice, something, a little extra every time you go to the grocery store. The things you use on a day-to-day basis, that's the things that's going to be gone when the grid goes down. You better have you some means of purifying and sanitizing water. That's two different things, Dave Hodges. And besides that, you can find it on my uh, channel. Uh, I got videos showing you many different ways to do that, several ways, including just using paper bottles and stuff you're going to find out in paper bottles, plastic bottles and stuff you'd find outdoors, along with edible, wild edible videos and a lot of other information. Of what you need to do should we have an equal war. A whole playlist on that. And that is a very detailed playlist, second to none on the Internet, uh, I would dare say. So, my friends, please. If you've not subscribed to my channel, subscribe, bang the update notification bell, and click call. This is cause it's a proposition. This channel helps you survive, thrive, and stay on the, uh, out of the hive. And this is part of my eyes wide open and head on a swivel video series, so you'll know what's coming, so that you can think about it, so that you will prepare for it, so you'll share with your friends and family and say, guys, if you ever woke up, it's time to wake up. Things are not as pretty as they could thing be. You know, maybe these things won't come to pass. The problem is. It's too darn likely, and our economy is already messed up. We're going to have a hard winter coming up no matter what now with food and prices, inflation, and crisis. So uh, watch out. It's going to be a bad time in the nation, any nation for that matter. Food riot. Now, water riots have already started in Mexico, if you haven't seen it, down in Monterey, which, you know, I always thought was one of Mexico's top cities. So my friends, watch out, guys. You need to prepare. You need to get ready. Go to prepwithgregs.com, guys. Prepwithgreg.com. Check it out. You need this long-term food storage. Prepwithgreg.com. We got specials there. We can get this stuff. It's basically less than three dollars a day for a meal. Two thousand calories a day. Breakfast, lunch, and went a dinner. Deals that'll make you a winner. This stuff you can bug out with a real easy because it's lightweight. Kids can carry it. This is two weeks supply right here, and uh, you can bury it because this thing is sealed. The pouch is inside or sealed. This is a tough can- canister. It's easy to bury, easy to carry in your rucksack, your backpack, or whatever you got to get along and on your, on your hike. <laughs> if you got to really bug out. Okay, my friends, I am going to share some ch- uh, videos here. We're going to walk through this real fast. I hope this ain't going to be too long tonight because it's late here and I got I got many things to do. So uh, let's do a share screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guys, here it is. Five missiles fired by China appear to land in Japan's exclusive economic zone. 
So they're pulling Japan into this. Is that intentional? Is it accidental? Is this the more of their wolf warrior stand? What's cooking here, guys? What are they up to? Well, you figure. You tell me in the comments below what you think. All right, guys, here we are. This is uh, same article. Okay, yeah, there's, here's some of this video. Let's see if I can blow this up. I won't want to play, but just a second of it. This is several missiles following the same uh, cloud, I mean, same paper trail. This is an older volley right here. You can see the smoke's already dispersed, but you can watch and you can see little missiles lighting up through here. There goes one right there. So, yeah, there's another. So, that's a multiple launch rocket fire exercise going on right now. And as one of these like this that flew over Taiwan, these are turned from near the beach. Some of these photographs I've seen beach goers out inside. I'm not going to go through all that stuff. I don't want to get a strike on this channel, guys. But holy guac and smoke and moly. So this is from the Straits Times. I guess this is right out of the Straits there. <clears throat> Surrounded in live fire exercise. China demonstrates the ability to blockade Taiwan in the event of war. Wow. Blockade. A blockade is an act of war. By the way, if Ta Taiwan is actually, by the, they're effectively running a blockade right now. They have pointed this exercise. Hopefully, it will end when the exercise is supposed to end Sunday. Come Monday, well, no, actually Sunday, our time will be Monday, their time. Did they, are they really going to end it? Will they extend it? Or will this be a permanent feature? Will they move in? Oh, see, in, the days, in today's day and time, you can't sneak forces around and uh, and amass them without being known and seen with satellite technology we have. You have to declare you're just doing an exercise. This is a training exercise, maybe an exercise in anger or something. And then all of a sudden, the exercise becomes the real deal. That's how wars get launched these days. Chinese boots may be storming the shores of Taiwan in the next 18 months. And they are already planning on it. Look at this. And they are already planning U.S. Army officials have warned. So there you go. And this is where they're talking about doing it between the meeting of the Party Congress, where uh, Xi Jinping is elected to, to be reelected, the ruler, the furrier of China, one more time for an unprecedented third term. And the November. U.S. presidential election. So what we got? Oh, this thing calls it a year and a half in this article. It's most like two years to me. Some people can't count. Hey, they're just journalists, right? Wow. China ramps up practice for invasion of Taiwan. Uh, Xi Jinping scrambles to secure his legacy. Again, that's at that party Congress return in November. Now, does he need to be tough before then? Uh, did he lose face uh, with Nancy Pelosi? Maybe he's got to make it up. Maybe they, they, they actually start softening Taiwan up. I don't know. We'll talk about that. Later. Tensions sky high as USS Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier heads toward waters near Taiwan. So we got an aircraft carrier heading right in there. But if you think that's all there is to it, why don't they just keep talking about the Ronald Reagan? Look at this, guys. We got four carriers in the area. The Ronald Reagan, it don't even look like the closest one, according to this, because their Navy is not going to show you exactly where these ships are. That would be a huge intel uh, issue. USS Triple E, USS Exit, Abraham Lincoln, uh, American ESG, Sombreros, Japan. We got one, two, three, four major ships, aircraft carrier groups in this area. With all the stuff going on in Russia, we only got two over here. So are we expecting something over here? Why are they only talking about the Ronald Reagan? About the Abraham Lincoln? The USS Exit, the USS Tripoli, the Sassambo? I don't even know. Oh, that's a, maybe American ESG. Is that a, something to do with Japan? I don't know what that one is. All right, guys. <clears throat> Now, oh yeah, there was drones flown over the island of uh, Kumoy. I don't know if I'm saying that right. So Taipei, the capital of Taiwan, is not happy about this. So they're not only shooting a missile over, over 
the main area of Taiwan, the main island of Taiwan, but the Chinese are flying drones over and they're shooting flares at them. Earlier, I saw an article this morning claiming that they shot a drone down, but uh, later I'm saying that it does not appear to be the case that uh, they're actually firing flares at them to try to warn them off. If they actually shot one down, that might induce the war, although a drone is not like shooting somebody. Hey, guys, the uh, thing is, if uh, Taiwan goes down or it gets blockaded too long, you get a, a break in the global supply chip production. This is from a gamer uh, article here, but it's going to affect a lot more than just gamers. How about our automobiles and uh, industrial systems, all these things that we have that are industrial robots that produce things. All these things have chips in them. Every vehicle we got these days because of the emission control standards uh, and fuel mileage requirements have chips in them. My 76, uh, Betsy Blue, one ton truck, don't. No. Most 79 two ton truck don't. I got two tractors, and neither one of them got a chip in them because <laughs> they're old. Thank goodness. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, my computer in my red van is fried, as computers are so off to do. China's 19,000 mile per hour nuclear missiles able to strike multiple cities in one strike. These are the things people are worried about now. Uh, and I mentioned this last night in what I call the DF-21s and DF, that's the Don Fang 21, Don Fang 26 missile. Uh, it's what our military, uh, our Air Force in Guam, uh, our Navy in Guam, Anderson Air Force Base. Uh, these are all targets from these missiles. DF-17 and the DF-21 are considered carrier killers, although DF-21 and DF-26 could hit Guam, as far as I know. All the, the DF-41 is there miss one of their intercontinental ballistic missiles? I don't remember showing this article, so I better skip on here. Now, on plans to more than double its missile manufacturing capability, going from 207 to 497 uh, missiles uh, per year. Now, how fast are they going to do this? How much time do they have to do it? They really need a lot of missiles. They've got missiles, but do they have enough? China rejects U.S. call of nuclear arms control talks. Well, they were already rejecting calls before Pelosi visited Taiwan. They've been rejecting them offhand all along. Why? Because they want to catch up to us. And why are we talking about having arms control talk with Russia and basing how many weapons we have on how many Russia has when China is coming up so fast? And oh, yeah, once again, little Kim don't want to be left out. He's got to threaten the nuclear United States and South Korea. Because he, he don't want to be left out in all this tension going on. So God forbid we forget little Kim. Quite frankly, I would expect him to like something about the same time China does just to complicate things for us because we're, we're already so tied up. We've already went through so many munitions. That's not funny. But guys, get ready. I say join our survival tribe network. This is something that we're, we're setting up. Yeah, this has got people from all over the country in it, and it's, and it's just starting out. But you'll see more and more people from your local communities in here in the coming weeks, and you can start networking directly with them to self-organize your groups. The watchword is when you come in here and join, just use a moniker. Don't use your real name. Just come in here and just use a moniker. All we need to know is what city you're in and some of your skill sets so we can figure out how you'd fit in with our various groups or so y'all can figure out how you fit in with each other. This is going to be a grassroots, self-organized thing. You get to organize your own groups according to your own uh, predilections, interests, uh, whatever suits you. Uh, it will, typically, there will be a landowner who will be the host. And that landowner has got to decide if they will want to bring you on to their property. And you got to decide if you want to be part of it. You got to vet people. Everybody's got to vet each other very carefully, OK? So that's all I'm going to say about that right now. The survival, survivaltribenetwork.com. Check it out, survivaltribenetwork.com. So I'm going to stop the share. Now, I've just uh, done a series of videos on my channel and Galactic Greg's latest video, which is on my Galactic Greg channel. I'm not posted it here yet. On um, uh, how we can defend ourselves from Chinese missiles, from Russian missiles of all kinds how we can stop the unstoppable Sarmar, how we can stop all the DF missiles from China, all the uh, hypersonics, how we can even stop an invasion of Taiwan using 
existing rocket technology, using existing interceptors, I go through several interceptor systems and I look at their weights and capabilities versus uh, the uh, carrier, the rocket carrier I'm talking about, which take them up hypersonic and the type of stuff you use, even the merits of using sand and number nine bird shot. <laughs> but we talk, I'm talking about technologies that's already existing that just has to be integrated to make it work. And don't think about integration and get buckets of sand but to function. <laughs> so trust me, that will take you out a heat shield of a hypersonic vehicle. So I go through this. Trade studies are required to optimize it. This stuff needs to be done, needs to be done fast. Like the Doolittle mission, which launched uh, flying fortresses off an aircraft carrier on a one-way mission over Tokyo uh, to prove that we could bomb them after we hit Pearl Harbor. We need to have that kind of can-do attitude today because we don't have time for contractors to spend 10 to 15 years lining their pockets on a slow-moving, high-precision, uh, brand-new weapon system when we don't even need a brand-new weapon system. Integrate the stuff we got today, and it will work. We can make this stuff work. We can integrate technologies that's on the shelf. Now, they try a little integration, and then the biggest integration will probably be in software, but it's using software types that we're already accustomed to developing in terms of drone swarm technology. Just to read the video on Black Regal Snack, you can go to that channel and check it out. I'll put it on this channel probably tomorrow. Or it may be the same day as day, because I don't want to get this video up today or not. If it's past midnight, I'm already really, really late trying to get it in here. Past midnights, all the videos I post go, and I'm getting really close to it. So it's like, is there any point in posting? No, not if it's only going to get 500 viewers. So uh, let me see what's going to happen here, guys. We got to, I got to get this word out. It's very important. I want to get it out today, but I'm a busy guy. It's hard to pull everything together. So hang on. God bless and Greg out.